What is up guys, it's your boy Rick Kakis and today we are going to be discussing what I think is going to be the best new strand subclass between Titans, Warlocks, or Hunters. Now you're probably thinking, wait a minute, Lightfall isn't even here yet, how could you possibly know that? And you got a good point. Obviously when Lightfall releases, we're going to discover so many new builds that you couldn't have predicted. However, you're going to have to pick one of these three subclasses to start your your Lightfall journey. And so the purpose of this video is me with my knowledge of everything about these strand subclasses, and I really have paid attention to everything, combined with my frankly embarrassing amount of time playing Destiny 2, I'm going to give my opinions on what looks to be, to me, the most powerful and what is, in my opinion, a good idea to invest in off the bat when Lightfall launches. So let's go over these three subclasses and highlight their most powerful sounding features, starting with the Titan Berserker. Now when this was first revealed, it actually created a controversy because so many Destiny 2 players voiced their disappointment with yet another melee based Titan subclass, Bungie was actually forced to respond and acknowledge the feedback and kind of promise that it's better than it appears, but again, we're not off to a good start. But regardless, the melee is called Frenzied Blade. When you press the button, you will lunge forward and slash your opponent. Now importantly, by default, you have three melee charges with this. So you can go from one enemy to the next to the next if they're close enough together, or presumably melee the same enemy three times in a row with three charged melee attacks, which should do significantly more damage than just punching them three times. And again, this is kind of a big deal right now in Destiny 2, the most melee charges you can get is two with certain things. And so having that third melee could potentially give you a huge edge if you're, you know, up in close quarters just melee fighting an opponent within the Crucible, for example, so that's nothing to scoff at. In addition, the super is called Blade Fury. So you're going to roam around the battlefield. The light attack is, according to Bungie, a supercharged version of the Frenzied Blade melee melee we just talked about, and each light attack that connects increases the next attack's speed, which maxes out after three hits, and then when you connect a bunch of light attacks, it builds energy for the heavy attack, which shoots out a pair of projectiles that will seek enemies damage them and also suspend them. And suspending is huge in Strand. It basically negates an enemy's ability to fight you back for a short time, which in PvE, especially when we've had stuff like stasis freezing enemies is very similar. It's a very powerful effect. Now here's the thing. Roaming supers can be very, very powerful in the Crucible, but they tend to be not that great in PvE. Generally, you want one and done supers or stuff that supports your team like Well or Bubble. And so this super to me sounds just pretty average. However, moving to the aspects, this is where you find the most powerful features of this build. So the first one is called Into the Fray. Destroying a tangle weaves woven mail onto the Titan and nearby allies. In addition to reducing damage taken, this aspect also increases the Titan's melee energy regeneration while wearing woven mail. So if you can incorporate generating lots of tangles, which will appear when you kill enemies with certain strand abilities and weapons and so on, and you're constantly blowing those up, woven mail just providing an increase of damage resistance is just going to be phenomenal, like especially if it stacks on top of having 100 resilience for your class, for example, like this could be a very easy way to get a ton of damage resistance, especially in PvE. Now, the other aspect is Dranger's Lash. While the Titan casts their class ability, their barricade, the Titan will blast forward a powerful ripple in reality, suspending enemies that are caught in the shockwave's path. So this makes it so that every single time you deploy your barricade, which you're going to be doing a lot because you want to be running 100 resilience all the time in PvE, right, for damage resistance, 
you're going to be shooting out a blast that suspends targets in front of the barricade. That seems very, very good, right? It's essentially similar to the aspect that the Stasis Warlock gets where if you cast your Rift, nearby enemies are frozen, and that has proven itself to be pretty decent. So again, giving utility and giving extra power to your barricades that you already want to be casting and investing in is just icing on top of the cake. That seems very good. However, again, super and melee seem pretty mid, with the exception being if you're really going down a melee build, having those three charges could definitely be powerful. But we've got to move on from there to the Hunter. So, the Threadrunner's melee ability is Threaded Spike, and this will shoot out a rope dart that bounces between enemies, damaging and severing them before returning to the Hunter. Now, importantly, as it's coming back, it will grant melee energy for each enemy hit, and also, you can catch this rope dart by pressing the melee button at the right time. So, right off the bat, this seems like a very powerful melee ability. Bouncing between all these enemies means that if there's a group of enemies, one melee can presumably hit a lot of them, and also causing that strand sever effect is going to reduce the damage output of those enemies you hit. So if you get anywhere near your melee energy fully back for catching this, it's probably the best strand melee, right? It is one of, sounding like, the best melees in the game. Like, bouncing off a bunch of enemies, refunding itself, just, you know, you don't need a, an exotic or an aspect or whatever, it just refunds its own energy, and also, it's making your survivability better because it's reducing those enemies' damage output. Like, this all sounds great. However, moving to the super, Silk Strike, it's another roaming super. And we kind of talked about the pros and the cons with the Berserker, but Silk Strike sounds a lot better. You can grapple freely while it's active, so you can move around a lot easier. Additionally, it has the light attack being just kind of shooting out the dart, so you can engage enemies at further distances. And the heavy attack is you swinging it around in 360 degree uh, kind of circle around you, which obviously is great for clearing like low level uh, red bar ads. So while it does seem a bit better than the Titan Berserker just on surface level, again, it, I don't think it's going to completely take over the meta in PvE. Would you rather have someone with a Silk Strike or someone with a Tether? In most activities, the Tether is going to be the right choice, especially in higher level activities. Now, as for the aspects, you have Ensnaring Slam. So while in the air, you press your air move input to slam downward, suspending all nearby enemies. So kind of like Shatter Dive for Stasis, but with less setup. Whereas with Shatter Dive, you'd have to freeze the enemies first, get above them, and then slam down for the effect, right? With this, it just seems like you jump above them, you slam down, and then you suspend everyone. And again, we've talked about how suspend does seem to be very powerful. Also, we have Widow's Silk. This is gonna grant an additional grenade charge, and remember, your grappling hook is actually a grenade, and this is also gonna make the Hunter's grapple ability create a persistent grapple tangle when it latches, which fully refunds grenade energy when grappled too. Hunters can use this ability to set up chains of grapple points for the entire team to use, greatly enhancing their ability to quickly move around in combat and or traverse the environment. So, this could either be kind of useless or completely insane, right? Imagine if you're in something like a Grandmaster activity or heck, even the new raid, this doesn't kill any enemies or do any damage, but oh my goodness, it sounds like it could let your whole team get to some insane cheese spots. Throughout Destiny's history, there's been you know boss fights where if you're standing in a certain location, you can shoot the boss and the boss can't hit you, but a lot of those are pretty inaccessible. If you're grappling around the entire map, you can go anywhere you want, I feel like that's going to open a ton of different cheese spots. And this applies to the Crucible as well. If you're able to grapple up to some sus spots or simply attack enemies from the middle of the air where they're not expecting, uh, that's going to give you a huge advantage. But guys, moving on from there, the last subclass to look at is the Warlock Broodweaver. Now, their melee ability is actually going to be Arcane Needle, where a deadly projectile which tracks targets causes high damage and unraveling upon impact, 
warlocks can quickly chain three arcane needles in a row. So remember, unraveling is going to uh, cause threads to burst out of the target and attack nearby targets, which also unravels them when that enemy uh, is attacked slash dies. So it's kind of like uh, getting them volatile and then when they die, when they're hit more, that volatile explosion goes off and damages nearby enemies and can also sometimes make those nearby enemies volatile as well. So the chaining three things is interesting. You may want to compare it to the Titan's melee ability that had three charges, but they don't say anything about charges here. I think it just kind of remains active for a certain amount of time. So if you're spamming it, you can shoot it three times in a row, but unlike the Titan where you actually get three uh, charges that you can space out a lot longer, the Warlock, you have to go all in on three quickly or nothing. But again, spamming three seeking projectiles as your melee, which causes unraveling, which is a relevant effect, seems very, very powerful. In fact, you know, it could even be more powerful than the hunter, depending on the range of these seeking projectiles and how much damage they do. If you can simply like spam three just around the corner, they seek a little bit, almost like a Yoden, hit an enemy, they're either completely dead or almost dead, like that could be very, very good. Now the super here is going to be the only non roaming super and it's called needle storm. So this is going to cast a bunch of uh, strand spikes like forward, like almost like a missile barrage. And then when they stick into enemies, they turn into an army of threadlings after exploding, which are going to hunt down more enemies. And this warlock subclass has a lot of synergies with threadlings, right? These are essentially like colony shots, the colony exotic grenade launcher that has projectiles that will turn into little robots and seek around and explode. That's basically what threadlings do. They seek around and they will explode uh, when they get to an enemy and do damage to them. So needle storm is in my opinion, the best PVE super of these three subclasses because it's not roaming. You can get it off. It seems to do a lot of damage uh, very quickly and then go back to doing whatever you're doing. Now, as for the aspects, you have Weaver's Call. So when you cast your Rift, the Warlock weaves three Threadling eggs, which hatch into Threadlings when they hit a surface. Any perched Threadlings are converted to additional eggs. So importantly, guys, that perching effect is gonna be unique to this subclass. So the other subclasses can spawn Threadlings no problem, but the Warlock, when the Threadlings are spawned and you've killed all the enemies, they don't have any to fight, they're gonna go and perch on you, the Warlock, kind of turn back into an egg and stay with you until you encounter more enemies. And then they're going to hop off their perch and go forward to damage those new enemies. So it's kind of like you're not wasting uh, your effects. You are saving those threadlings and they're only gonna be attacking enemies when there are enemies, right? And that is definitely a pretty useful thing. And certainly this aspect seems very useful. You are gonna be casting your rift all the time with the warlock you want a hundred recovery to just spam those healing or even empowered rifts over and over again so spawning these threadlings which go out and do additional damage like that just seems so good it's very similar to what we talked about with the titan aspect that adds effects to your barricade you want to be ca casting your rift as much as possible and now you're getting additional benefits for doing so very, very good. Now the other aspect is Mind Spun Invocation, and this is gonna improve all three of the different strand grenades. So kind of like how Touch of Thunder for the Arc Titan improves all the arc grenades, this is going to make your grapple when you execute a grapple melee. So when you grapple and you're finishing that grapple, you're getting close to enemies, you can do a special grapple melee ability, and this will now spawn three threadling eggs from the targets, so you're now creating threadlings for doing that too. For the threadling grenade, you can consume your threadling grenade to generate a full complement of perched threadlings. So obviously, normally you just throw your threadling grenade, it spawns you know, a few threadlings, it seeks to nearby enemies, right? But with this, you can turn it into likely way more threadlings that just have that perched, unperched attack ability, right? Then lastly, with the shackle grenade, you consume your shackle grenade to gain a buff, creating a suspending detonation on every kill. 
And guys, every single time we've seen an aspect like this that improves a bunch of grenades, it ends up being very good because the grenades are already at a base level good. Discipline is one of the most important stats in the game. Certainly for PvE, you want to be throwing your grenades as much as possible. So if you have an aspect that makes those even better, like that is definitely very, very powerful. And so guys, with all of those things considered, I think the most powerful strand subclass is likely to be the Broodweaver Warlock, simply because those threadlings sound very, very powerful for the neutral game. In both PvE and PvP, if you are having these things that go out and attack enemies, just on their own and it doesn't interfere with anything you do and they seem relatively easy to spawn just by doing things like casting your rift, that does seem very, very good. On top of the fact that the super needle storm also seems like one of the better supers. Again, like you can't slay out as much maybe as the roaming supers, but those again tend to really uh, be good in lower level content and in higher level content when you don't have time to be out there getting smacked by champions and, and your entire roaming super can't even kill an overload champion, like they become way less viable. Um, not to mention the aspects for the Warlock, improving the grenades and improving your Rift, both of those sound very, very good. The melee sounds amazing as well. If I had three different classes, I would recommend starting with the Warlock Broodweaver for the first Strand subclass you unlock in Lightfall. Now, if you're looking for second place, I don't actually think there is one. I think the Berserker and the Hunter actually kind of tie. I know there was a lot of hate towards the Berserker, but its aspects sound actually amazing. Whereas the Hunter's aspects, they sound really, really good if you're specifically doing all the grapple stuff. But if you're not, if you have like a Threadling grenade, right? It, it, doesn't really do anything, right? And so that's where I think the Hunter is kind of faltering right now. Remember guys, this isn't the end of the discussion. Bungie's actually confirmed that more parts of the stasis subclasses, I believe more aspects, are gonna be added in future seasons. So what ends up being the best subclass within Lightfall? Well, expect that to potentially change within season 21. So keep that in mind. Guys, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.